sometimes people have what it takes, but they haven't recognized it yet. Just go forward. So what do you need to do? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person that's different and is bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like the phoenixes that you are. Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is Andrew David, Blake Newbar's partner program, the Daily High Performance Call. Purpose of the call is to help you better yourself, not just understand better the opportunity, but the skill set and the mindset needed. We're in the midst of a challenge for a lot of you. A lot of you are taking part in it, and I hope you're putting the training to work. I hope you're doing something. Um, but what I wanted to talk about today is, is really the the real reason why some of you guys are struggling with the motivation. Some of you guys are struggling with the obstacles to get stuff done, right? And what I want you to do is pay attention because I've gotten some of these excuses over the course of the few months with some of you guys. And some of you may not have said it directly to me, but there's a good chance that you may have said it to yourself, right? You're wondering why you're not getting things going. And, and the reason that I know some of these excuses so well is because I've dealt with them personally. I'm dealing with them now. There are moments when I need to sit down and make that work, right? I've got to put myself through the paces. I'm reconnecting email now to a new funnel and trying to get that set up and was on a phone call again today with support from GoDaddy for the third day in a row, trying to work through all of the issues that are there. And, you know, you hear from time to time, whether it's about the business or it's about your personal life, you just say, you know, it's, it's just this once I wasn't able to get to it. Today was just kind of a weird day. You know, it just wasn't, you know, on my list today, there's all these other important things that I had to do. I couldn't really do it today. You know, maybe it's for fitness. It's, you know, I, I worked out yesterday. I'm a little extra sore. I didn't sleep well last night. You know, I'm just, I'm really extra hungry because I'm kind of stressed out. And so I'm eating a little bit more. Well, you know, I would have gotten it done already, but technology just bothers me so much. And it's such a struggle. I mean, I'll, I'll get it figured out. I'll learn it eventually. You know, oh, well, you know, family got in the way. The kids had, kids are starting school or the kids just got back or they have their first homework assignment or they have their first test. I have a new project due at work. I'll get to it soon, right? Hey, I'm... I, I would, but it's just, I don't like the taste of that, or I don't like doing this, or I don't, you know, this training or that training, there's all these different elements, right? I just, I don't have the time today. And so people make up these excuses and the reality is they're not excuses. Most of them are just lies, lies that we tell ourselves to try and make ourselves feel a little bit better. Lies that we can easily justify, or at least we get other people around us to justify for us. Well, honey, I mean, you've, you've been working so hard. It's okay to take a day off. You know, you did great last week. You, you went to the gym three or four times. You're okay. It's all right if you miss a few days. Your buddy's saying, you know, you're pushing so hard. You're eating. So, look, it's just this one time. Just have a couple of extra drinks, have the appetizer, have this, you know, don't worry about sitting down and working on it right now. You'll get to it later. And then people come and they talk and they, they wonder where the motivation is. They ask where discipline comes from. And the reality is discipline comes from within. And here's where the difference between motivation and discipline comes in. See, Zig Ziglar said, you know, motivation is something you, you have to renew all of the time. It's a lot like showering. It's the reason that we shower, hopefully, every single day. It's because it needs to be done over and over again. Motivation works in the same way. See, if you are willing to lie to yourself, the, more, the higher frequency of the lies that you tell yourself, the higher likelihood that you're going to lack the motivation to actually get something done you know, and sometimes you meet someone and, and this goes to some of you guys, not necessarily that are really struggling because there's different excuses that we tell. If you're really struggling with things and financially it's been rough or you've tried a few things and it hasn't worked, then the lies that you tell yourself are, I haven't succeeded because I haven't had the resources. I haven't succeeded because that problem, uh, you know, that program didn't work. This didn't teach me enough this job let me go before they should have. They hired a family member instead of me. We tell ourselves certain excuses. You know, I'm in the situation I'm in because of a divorce or because this happened or that happened or COVID or the economy and I got let go. So there's those excuses. And then some of you I work with, 
where the lies that we tell ourselves are different because we say, well, you know, I've gotten to this point and, and things are okay. You know, you've had a certain amount of time in an industry and you're doing all right. Bills are getting paid. You're in a good house. The family is happy. Things are going all right. You know, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. I just, I can't find the motivation to get to the next level. And then the question really becomes, are you really sure? Do you really want to take it to the next level? And, you know, and, and you may say yes, but guys, I, I, I just don't think so. A lot of times, you know, you see, if, if you really wanted to take it to the next level, then you wouldn't be asking the question, where do I find the motivation? The motivation would find you. The discipline would find you because it comes from within. You know, it, it's going to be there and you'll find a way to nurture it. And then you'll find a way to get things done. You know, I mentioned the other day, waking up oftentimes, it's not like there's an excitement level to go out and, and run sprints or push the sled or get on the Stairmaster or to eat food that doesn't contain the carbs that I'm really wanting. You do it because that's, that's what you've got to do. That's what the discipline demands, you know, and if you're hearing that and you're going, well, maybe I am just lying to myself and I don't have the motivation. Maybe I don't have the discipline. You don't be, don't be too disappointed because the reality is, is if you were truly content, then you wouldn't be asking the question at all. If you were truly happy, if everything was totally great where you were, you wouldn't be asking the question, how do I change? And what can I do different, right? And if you're looking at it and saying, yeah, I, I do want it. What's bugging you is that the truth is that you already know. You know that you're capable of doing more. You know that you're capable of, you've got greater potential. You, you know you could give more. You know you could push harder. You know you could eat better. You know you could work a out a little bit more. You know you could control your time. You know that the time that you waste on social media, that you come back and go, oh, well, I would have gotten it done, but this interrupted me or that interrupted me. You know that you're capable of more. But the thing is, is if you tell yourself that truth, if you allow it to be totally unfiltered and raw and real, and you tell yourself what you need, then the discipline can and will be there, but it's not going to be easy. See, there is no guarantee in this life. And so at times I get asked for a guarantee in this business and I kind of laugh. If you're looking for a guarantee, then you're on the wrong planet. You're living in the wrong reality. The only guarantees around here, I don't care where you're at in the world, is that you're going to have to work. There's going to be taxes to be paid. At some point, the, the end of this journey on this earth is going to come about, and then you're going to end up with more taxes. That's about the only guarantee that we've got. So here's what it boils down to. Where do you find the discipline? Right. Yeah. David saying, as Sim said, it's not IQ, it's, it's can do. You can make it happen, but only through discipline. So Jocko Willink, and I've talked about him before. He's a, a trainer with the Navy SEALs. He's got an amazing book called Discipline Equals Freedom. And that's what it boils down to. If you want to be free from the frustrations, if you want to be free from the excuses and the lies you've been telling yourself, then it's discipline. See, the motivational help to get over occasional days when you're frustrated, the motivational help when, when you're kind of struggling through and you can get a quick pep talk, but you still need the discipline to reach out for the motivation. You need the discipline to turn around and, and you know put the donut down, to not order the food on, on the app, to pick up the weights or pull out the yoga mat or get your butt to the gym or sit down and work, even though you've dealt with some kind of frustration for the last day or two with what you're putting together with your funnel or your business or whatever's happening. And you just need to work. You've got everything you need. All the potentials there. Just quit telling yourself lies. Decide to work a little bit on the discipline. The discipline will equal freedom. And what's that saying? The truth shall set you free. True discipline will, allow, will guide you to the truth. It'll allow you to stop telling yourself lies and let you do, to live better. So uh, this book is, it's Discipline Equals Freedom by Jocko Willink. It's, it's an interesting read. It's almost poetic and short story-like in the way that it's written. It's not necessarily chapter by chapter in him telling stories, um, but it is poignant and it hits home if you allow it. Now, some of you 
are going to listen to this and you're going to just think that I'm full of it. And no, I'm not lying to myself and that's not me. And see, you don't, you just don't understand my problems. And look, I get it. I do because I've been there because I've told myself those same lies. See, someone asked me recently, and I know I've talked about it on a number of these and some of you guys have been around for six months. And so, you know, a lot of that story, but I I was thinking about real specifically recently, one particular day. Um, I used to do cleaning and restoration and that started out before we were able to build it up and have employees and stuff. It started out doing most of our work was contracted commercial cleaning. And I would do about 95% of the work that I did was inside of churches all around the state of Florida and Georgia. And so throughout the, the week, um, I would, we would go to an area and I'd be in that general geographical region for five to seven days at a time. And for a while I was doing the work on my own. And so if you've ever seen guys work with a carpet cleaning, you know, big truck mount, we had the huge, huge machine and I lead a hose out and 250 foot of hose and you work your way back. But there was one time I was cleaning a gym in this church and it had carpeted basketball court, you know, cause they would use it as overflow for, uh, for their chapel meeting room. And I'm in there and I'm cleaning. And this is, I mean, at this point, probably 15 years ago, maybe more. And so before smartphones and, you know, on my own for a week at a time, no one to really talk to. And I've got a fanny pack on my hip with a, a CD, a discman in it. And the headphones pulled up through my shirt so it doesn't get caught on the, on the carpet wand. And I'm listening to books. And I don't, you know, I, I remember listening to, all sorts of different stuff. Yes, Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins and everything else. But I remember I was probably eight or 10 hours into a shift that day. And just, I mean, mind numbing. Just this, back and forth, across a basketball court, back and forth, right? Two to three foot at a time is what you're doing. Thousands and thousands of strokes throughout the day. You get into, and some of you guys have experienced this with the work that you've done, you get into this point where, you're able to complete the work just on autopilot. I'm a drone, a mindless drone. The only thing that's earning me any money because my father-in-law at the time would drill that into me. Like the wand keeps moving. The wand is what makes money here. The wand has to keep moving. So I'm not even the one making the money. The wand is the one making the money. My value is below the wand, right? And if you're there working in two, you've got a helper with you. Then the helper, the only thing they're doing is making sure that they move the hose so that the wand can keep moving. They're not even worth the value of the first helper. And, and that's that, that mindset. And I remember sitting there going, there's got to be something more that I'm worth than moving this wand across sections of square foot at a time. And I remember doing the math at one point and the overall value of that carpet cleaning was somewhere because it was, you know, volume and commercial and the way it's priced out, it was something like two to three cents a square foot. That was my value at the time, two to three cents a square foot. And you're just working through that all day long. And I'm going, I, there's some brain in here. There's more here that I'm worth. Now, <clears throat> Throughout the years, the list of excuses, ergo, the list of lies that I've told myself I could fill a book with, you know, why I didn't succeed sooner, why I haven't done more. Currently, where I'm at, where I'm I'm generating more revenue than really any other point in my life, you know, what's keeping me from that next step? And so going through the last few weeks as I'm pushing, trying to do that, as I'm reaching some of those upper limit barriers that I've got, again... Because you go through that at multiple stages, guys. You don't just break through and stop telling yourselves lies and excuses and then never have to deal with it again. There's a good chance you're going to have to deal with some other one in the future as you get ready for that next step. And so, yeah, my list of of excuses is pretty long. I've dealt with them. You know, why, why the credit sucked, why I was taking so long to fix my credit, why I was struggling with this, the, the health and allowing myself to gain weight. Right over the years, slowly pouring it on. I was joking with um, my fiance just with Sarah the other day about that, and you know the COVID nineteen. And I posted on my on my Instagram, kind of like you know this 
disconcerting picture that I'd taken at, at a resort last year for my birthday when we went to Marco Island. And I, I remember looking at the picture after it was taken going, holy crap, have I put on weight? And I'm excited because this year I've, I think I've lost about 20 something pounds. I'm hoping that that profile picture is going to look a little bit different this year. But it was the excuses. It was the stress. It was sitting at home. It was, well, we can't go to the gym. We've got this. We've got that. And it's just all bullshit, guys. That's all it is. Just lies I was telling myself. That's it. So identify the lies you're telling yourself. And then recognize that even though you've been lying to yourself, there's something there underneath that you know the truth of what you're capable of. And identify that truth and hold tight to it. Because if you're willing to hold to that truth, then you can overcome all the rest of this. The days when you're not motivated, the days when the excuses pop up, find that truth of what you're capable of, what you're going after, why you're going after it, write it down somewhere, write it down every single day and just make it happen. And that's it. Just make it happen. So I think at the core of this next 60 days and you becoming more efficient and you becoming better and you becoming someone that manages their time, it's going to boil down to discipline. It's all going to boil down to discipline. So with that in mind, I'm going to end it now. Spend the next 10, 12 minutes kind of thinking about the lies you told yourself and what your truth is. Or if you already know those things and go get something done, go post, go comment, go do something productive right now, get it done. And let's see some of you guys turn into the amazing individuals that you are when all of that truth comes to light. And on that note, go out, rise up, rise from the ashes. Fly like the flag. Sometimes people have what it takes, but they haven't recognized it yet. Just go forward. So what do you need to do? How do you stand out? So what you need to do is be that person that's different and is bigger than you think. Rise from the ashes and fly like the phoenixes that you are.